Now we'll format our data so it displays better. We'll start by formatting the dollar amounts as currency. We select all the sales figures, including the totals. Then we click on the selection with the right mouse button. From the shortcut menu, we'll choose Format Cells. When we do, the Format Cells dialog box opens. This dialog box includes tabs for different ways to format cells. We want to format the way our numbers display, so we leave that selected. From the Number Format categories, we select Currency. Excel displays a sample of the format and three format controls. The first control sets the number of decimal places. We'll leave that set at 2. The next control sets the currency symbol. The list for this control includes foreign currency symbols if you need them. The third control sets the display of negative numbers. The default choice is fine. When we select OK, the numbers are formatted for currency with commas and two decimal places. And the total column got wider to fit the formatted numbers. If you haven't set a specific width for a column, it will widen automatically to fit numbers and their formatting. Now we'll format the numbers in the percent of sales column, and this time we'll use the toolbar. The formatting toolbar has buttons to apply styles for currency, percentage, and comma formatting, along with buttons for increasing and decreasing the number of decimal places. We select the percentage cells. Then we click on the percent style button. The numbers display with percent signs, but with no decimal places, which is the default percent style. To see a little more detail, we'll use the increase decimal button. When we click on the button, a decimal place is added. We click on it once more, and the numbers display as we want them, as percents with two decimal places. Now we'll format our other percentage numbers, and instead of going through the formatting steps again, we'll just copy the formatting we've already applied. The Format Painter feature copies formatting between cells. We select one of our formatted percentage cells, then we click on the Format Painter button. The mouse pointer displays with a paintbrush, and the selected cell displays with a marquee. To finish the copying, we just select the cells we want to format. Voila! The format is copied, and the pointer goes back to normal. Now we want to format these two separate dollar numbers. We select a cell we've already formatted for currency. Then we double click on the Format Painter button. Now we click on each cell we want to copy the format to. The Format Painter feature is still on. To turn it off, we can double click on the button again, or we can just press Escape. Next, we want to change this column label to make it more understandable. We press F2 to edit and type our change. When we press Enter, we see that we need to make the column wider. We can drag the border of the column heading as a screen tip shows the width, but that can take some trial and error. Instead, we'll use an Excel feature to fit the column to our selection. We open the Format menu and select Column. We could set a particular width, but we'll select Auto Fit Selection. When we do, the column width is set to fit the selection. And when we select a formula that uses that label, we see that it has automatically been updated. And by the way, if a column is too narrow for the numbers in it, it will display with pound signs. We'll use the Undo shortcut, Control-Z, to undo this demonstration. The next formatting change we'll make is to center the column labels. We select the labels. Excel has three alignment tools for left, center, and right alignment. It also has a feature for merging cells and centering text across them. We'll use the centering tool. When we click on it, the column labels are centered. Now we'll center the theater name across merged cells. We select the name and the cells will merge. Then we click on the Merge and Center button. The cells are merged and the text is centered. We do the same to the worksheet title. By the way, you can merge and unmerge cells with the alignment choice in the Format Cells dialog box. 
Now we'll format the row labels to right align them. We click on the Align Right button, but I don't really like the uneven left edge, so I'll use the Align Right button to turn off the alignment. Instead, we'll use the indent feature. We can decrease an indent or increase an indent. We'll use the Increase button. Each time we click on the button, the text is indented more. There, that looks better. Excel formatting has lots of other cell alignment options, including being able to align text vertically or at an angle. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Jim. There's no place like home. There is no place like home, Jim. Go there. <laughs>